Welcome to New Hope Baptist Church, a praying church, where the Reverend Roger K. Green is our pastor. Thank you for choosing to worship with us today, Sunday, April 7th, 2024. Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, New Hope Baptist Church Ann Arbor, and like us on Facebook at New Hope Baptist Church. You are invited to join us in person for service at 11 o'clock a.m. every Sunday. We look forward to worshiping with you again very soon. Now come, let us adore him as we enter into worship already in progress. Father, we just come to say thank you this morning. We thank you for your, your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you for just waking us up this morning. We thank you for putting food on our table. We thank you for putting clothes on our backs. We thank you for the roof over our head. But most of all, Father, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who died upon the cross for our sins. Father, we ask you to bless this church as a whole, Father. We ask you to keep us together and keep us strong, Father. Keep us together where we love one another, Father, and respect one another, Father. Father, we ask you just to continue to bless this church and keep us strong where we can be strong in the community, Father, where, we can, where the word that comes to us, Father, can be out there and be manifested in the hearts of men, Father. Father, we ask you to bless our pastor, Father. Father. We know that he goes through a long, a lot of struggles, Father, a lot of trouble. He has to endure a lot of things, Father. So we ask you, Father, to keep him strong, Father, where he has strength, Father, and strengthen where he is weak, Father. Father, we ask you to bless our sick, Father, bless our shut-ins, Father. There's somebody that wanted to come to the church this morning, Father, but wasn't able, Father. So, Father, we ask you to bless them right down. Let them know that you are worthy and able, Father. Let them know that you are healing, Father. Let them know that you are saving, Father. Let them know you are delivering, Father. Let them know right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. Father, we ask you to bless our families, Father. Keep our families together, Father. We ask you to bless those children right now, Father. Those who are out there in the right now, Father. Someone had left the home, Father. But we and the mother right now is struggling with their child right now, Father. We ask you right now to bring them back. Take control right now, Father. Let them know that everything is going to be all right. Father, we just love you right now, Father. We worship you right now, Father. We, you are worthy right now, Father. We adore you right now, Father. We can give you nothing but the praise and the worship right now, Father, and all the glory right now, Father. In Jesus' name, Father, we ask you all these things we praise. Amen. Amen.
Street. Oh yeah. Was
bless you. I'm so thankful he would not come down just to save himself. But he decided to die just to save me. Let's give the choir a big hand. Turn with me, please, in your Bible. We thank all of our visitors, all who are here today, even watching virtually, as we celebrate another first Sunday. Thank God for another Lord's Day. Amen. 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 Every day is the Lord's Day. Amen. Somebody say, "Real? How you figure that?" Because I heard the Bible say, "This is the day yeah. that the Lord has made. Yeah. We will rejoice and be glad in it." Turn with me, please, to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 30, 13 through 29. Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 29. Man, when you found it, say amen. 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 Give those even watching virtually, virtually a chance to, to get their Bibles. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus drew himself near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of, of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And the one of them whose name was Cleopas answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and hast not known the things which are come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and in word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they had found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher, and found it even so as the woman had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. Let us bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the word of God made expressly and purposefully for the people of God. We pray, O oh Lord, that your word, that your spirit might run from heart to heart and breast to breast. And that, Heavenly Father, we might be encouraged to know that you're still on the throne. Yeah. That no matter what we're going through, you're still on the throne. You sit high and you look low. Oh, yeah. You're the maker and the creator yeah. and the heavens and the earth. And for this, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for lengthening out the brickly threads of our improbable lives. Thank you, Lord, 
for allowing us to see another day. Thank you, Lord, for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Thank you for just the privilege of being in the house of the Lord, even virtually. And it's all in the precious name of Jesus. Let every heart please say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Just like to emphasize the 27th verse of chapter 24 and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Just like to share with you very briefly about a better understanding. After Good Friday, after the crucifixion, after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus met two men on a road to Emmaus and expounded unto them, explained to them, expanded upon the word of God. He opened up the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, from the law and the prophets. The Bible says that after that brief encounter that the Bible says they had a better understanding of Moses and the prophets and Adam to Jesus. They had a better understanding about who Jesus was and what he means in our lives. Amen. They had a better understanding of what it means to have a hope in Christ Jesus. They had a better understanding of the importance of being in relationship with God and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And as we celebrate another Lord's Day, I pray to God that we all might have a better understanding. Can I get a witness, church? Are you praying with me? It would that men might have a better understanding of what it means to be a man. Yeah, we're more is more to being a man than being having physical strength. More to being a man than simply being the progenitors of children. We are called to be protectors and not abusers. Providers and not users. To be a help and not a hindrance. Can I get a witness? I pray that we may have a better understanding of our unique role that God has called us, those of us who are husbands and fathers and leaders and mentors, that we not, not be drinking so much and doping so much and creeping so much and might be about taking care of God's business, the business that God has called us to do, that we might be about the business of being the men that God has created us to be. Would the woman might have a better understanding, recognizing and appreciating your unique roles as mothers, yeah. uh, providers, nurturers, sustainers, that we might not be clubbing so much and yeah. smoking so much and yeah. boogieing so much. No. Ain't nothing wrong with having a good time. I mean, amen. We've all been there, done that that we might recognize the awesome responsibility that God has placed upon you as women, amen, and mothers, that we might get our priorities straight and recognize that women are the vehicles through which all of humanity must come. I've often thought about that. That's, that's a, what an awesome, powerful blessing that Nobody gets made except through a woman, and the only one that was made without a woman was Adam. But through woman, all humanity must come. And that therefore you have a unique opportunity to shape this world and shape our children and mold them into Christian men and women. Would their children have a, a better understanding? I know we've got some young people here and we had a wonderful time in youth church this morning thank god for reverend and mrs kirk leading our youth church i'm telling you the young people are learning the word of god and the parents are bringing them to youth church and uh, 
and the members are supporting the world church, the, the youth church, and that's how it's supposed to be. Amen. I'm telling you, if you didn't, if you weren't here this morning, you missed it. I'm telling you, you missed that the young people are growing in Christ, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. But would that young people might get a better understanding and take advantage of, the, of your youth. You're not always going to be young. Are y'all listening to me? All of our young people from eight months to 108, you're not always going to be young. Take advantage. I want to say it again. Take advantage of your youth. There are some things you can only do while you're young. Don't waste it. Please don't waste it. I know you're anxious to get out there, but don't be disappointed when you get out there and find out that it ain't all that you thought it was. It ain't, it ain't all that it was cracked up to be. Take your time moving on out there. I declare. You might be surprised when you get out there and find out it ain't all of that. It ain't all you thought it was. There's a whole lot and a whole lot more. Amen. Yeah. Old folk used to say we're a short time young and a long time old. Take advantage of your youth. Enjoy your youth. I'm not saying don't enjoy it. Enjoy your youth. Please hear me when I say you, you're only young once. Enjoy your youth. Enjoy your youth. But don't waste it. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. Honor your mother and your father. You may be one one day. Amen. Would that parents would teach their children about Jesus. We try to teach them everything else, but they're going to need Jesus one day. Amen. And it's our job to introduce them to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's our job to introduce them to the Savior of the world. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, children, listen to your parents. Uh, I know you think they don't know nothing, old fogies, but they've been where you at. I know it's hard to believe. They've been where you at. They've been there, been through it. Maybe some even tougher times than you might be going through. Amen. But our parents have been where, been where you're at. Because there's nothing new under the sun. It's the same old sin. Amen. Ain't nothing new. I knew it looked new, but it really ain't. Look closely. It ain't all that new. <laughs> it, it really ain't. It ain't all that new. There's nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. It's, 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 it's the same old sin. Same old temptation. Same old boogaloo. Same old cognac. Same old Hennessy. Reefer, they used to call it reefer, now they call it blunt. It's the same old thing. Same old mixed jive, same old blow, same old streets, same old hustle, same old line dance, chow chow to the left, turn about, amen. Nothing new, look new, look close. It's old, amen. And even in the church, would that we all would have a better understanding. Yeah, have a better understanding of the importance of the role we play as the ministries that God has given us and blessed us with. I'm telling you, whatever God has given you, it is a blessing. Yeah. Definitely not a curse. Whatever God has called you to do, whether it's singing in the choir, or usher, mother's boy, missionary, whatever, whatever you, God has called you to do, it's a blessing. Amen. Folk are always tell me, Rev, I'm not going to do that no more. Well, you got to be careful about saying that. Right. What God has called us to do is a blessing. Amen. Preachers, teachers, ushers. Deacons, mothers, nurses, secretary, administrators, yeah. greeters, media ministry, security, upkeep of the groundskeeper of the church, 
singers, musicians, whatever you're doing for the Lord, realize the seriousness of your assignment. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're all in the business of kingdom building, soul saving. I know you don't believe it, but only what you do for Christ will last. When they lay you out, ain't nobody, been, ain't nobody gonna be talking about how much money you made, and what kind of car you drove, what kind of big house. Did you help anybody? Did you help anybody? Did you help anybody? Did you, did you serve the Lord? Did you tell somebody that Jesus saved? Did you try to live the life? I know it's hard, but we can at least try that you try to live the life that God has called us to live. We could all benefit, present company included, from a better understanding. Paul said we have a zeal for Christ, but not according to knowledge. In other words, Paul was saying we could benefit from a better understanding. And as I've gotten older, I discover I got more questions than answers. When I was 21, I knew it all. You couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> I knew it all. I knew it all. Mama, daddy couldn't tell me nothing. I knew everything, amen? I knew what was going on everywhere. Now at 72, I realize I don't know much of anything. All right. I really don't. I don't know much of anything. I got more questions than answers. Amen. I've got so much more to learn. Amen. So much stuff going on. Killing in Israel, Gaza Strip, wars and rumors of wars, COVID-19 pandemic, problems all over the world. Amen. I was talking to a friend of mine just last week. They were asking me some questions. And I kept saying, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He said, what do you mean? I don't know. I said, I don't know. Amen. I only know two things. Matter of fact, we had a question this morning in youth church. <laughs> Amen. They asked the question, uh, who was the prophet that went up in a chariot of fire? Oh. Young people came running to me. I said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the answer was Elijah. Amen? Amen? I have more questions than answers. Uh, amen? Uh, and I found out that uh, there's a whole lot of stuff I don't know, but I only knew two things for sure. I know that God is real. Yeah. I know that. And I know that Jesus saves. Yeah. Everything beyond that, questionable. I know two things for sure. Uh, I don't know much of anything. I, I don't even know people. I've been surprised by folk. Sometimes you think you know people, you realize that you don't know them at all. Amen. Amen. I don't know much of anything. I could benefit from a better understanding. Proverbs 4, 4 and 7 reminds us in all that getting, get understanding. I've pondered that passage for many years, and I still do. One of the deepest passages in the Bible. In all the houses, cars, clothes, vacations, trips, jewelry, value we place on so many material things, money, prestige, power, friends in high places, the Bible encourages us Get understanding. Uh, find out what's really going on. Check out what's really important. Everything not as important as you think. Find out what's really important. I interpret that to mean to take time for prayer. One of the most important things and most useful things I can do and one of the blessings I truly, truly, truly thank God for is prayer. Sometimes, even during the day, I just stop and take time and get down to my knees. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, spend time in Bible study, right. Sunday school. Open your mind. Our minds are so closed. Open your mind to the revelation of God, yeah. the vastness of this world, yeah. the vastness of our God. Yeah. We get locked in with our little minds, can't see beyond our nose. But the Bible says his thoughts are not our thoughts. Yeah. His way. Thank God, yeah. not our ways. Uh, if you could, folk would sell you air. Yeah. As a matter of fact, they do sell you air. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Open your mind to, to the vastness and greatness of God. Uh, Paul said it like this. He said, we can only fathom and imagine how deep God's love is for us. It's, yeah. it's deeper than deep. It's beyond our understanding. And then I heard that song, Ain't Understanding Mellow. It's good to understand who we are, and it's good to understand who God is and what is God's plan for our lives. Yeah. God has a plan for your life. Yeah. He does not mean for you to be a dope fiend. Yeah. He does not mean for you to be a whoremonger. Yeah. He does not mean for you to be a beggar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not God's plan. Yeah. He does not mean for you to be broke, busted, and disgusted. Yeah. That ain't God's plan for you. Yeah. Jeremiah says, I have plans for you yeah. to make you succeed. I have plans to make you the head and not the tail. Yeah. I've got plans for you to make you the lender and not the borrower. You ain't got to be begging all the time from folk. I got a friend of mine, holiday, every week or so he calls me and begs me for stuff. And I've asked the Lord, Lord, help me, give me the wisdom to help this man. I said, like, you don't have to beg. God didn't make you a beggar. He didn't make you a crackhead. That's not God's plan for us. Lord have mercy. I'm done with that. I just know God has better plans for us. That's not God's plan for us to be shuffling with our pants below our knees. That ain't God's plan for us. He wants us to stand tall and be what God has called us to be. Oh, man. And if we're honest with ourselves, we've been void of understanding. Yeah. And as a consequence, gotten ourselves in trouble. Oh, folks used to say hindsight is 2020. But we can all say, I wish I had. I better understand it. If I knew then what I know now, yeah. perhaps I wouldn't be in this situation. I, I might have made some better choices, would have made some better moves, would not have made so many mistakes, missteps, so many regrets, so many forgets, so many woulda, shoulda, cutters. If I had a better understanding, I might have thought before I put my mouth in action. I might have put my brain in gear before I put my mouth in motion. If I had a better understanding, I might have prayed before I made that move, that decision that turned out to be a bad one. You know, one bad move can mess you up. One bad move can mess you up. Amen. I wasn't going to tell this story, but I guess I will. <laughs> I went to bed last night. and had some stuff on the stove. Left it on the stove. On high. I woke up this morning, it dawned on me what I had done. I went downstairs, stuff was everywhere, but it was no fire. I could have been dead. 
sleep in my grave. Yeah. I'm in the house by myself. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. 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 One bad move mess you up. Amen. If I had a, if we all had a better understanding, might have been a better husband and wife. Amen. If I might have been kinder, gentler, who knows, might still be married. If I had a taken care of business, if I had a, had a if I had a handle my business, maybe tried to see things from somebody else's perspective. I might have seen, I might have, if I had tried to put myself in their shoes, maybe I would have understood some things. I don't know. Some of us can say that, amen? <laughs> Perhaps if I had a better understanding, I might have stayed in school, got my diploma degree, might not have parted so much, might have been more serious about my education. If, if I had a better understanding, I might not have hooked up with that person that boo found out wasn't no good for me. If I had a better understanding, I might have saved my money. That's always a good idea. When I got mixed up with drugs and alcohol, smoking, I might have took better care of my health, took better care of the things and the people that God has entrusted to me. If I had a better understanding, I'm paying the price. If I had spent more time with my family, treated them with a little more respect, if I had spent more time getting my head together, putting my priorities in order, getting my act together, maybe spent less time in the streets and more time with the Lord, more time in the church, more time in his word, more time in prayer. If I had just a little more understanding, maybe things would be different. I don't know. The truth is, so many things, church, we just haven't understood. We haven't understood the power of prayer. Wow. One of the most powerful tools in our spiritual arsenal yeah. is the power of prayer. Yeah. Paul said, men are always to pray and not faint. I know it's a cliche, but prayer changes things. Yeah. It really does. It changes conditions. It changes situations. Yeah. And if you let it, it'll even change you. The effectual fervent prayer of the, of the righteous availeth much. We haven't understood that salvation demands sacrifice. You got to give God some time. Can I get a witness? Yeah. We tend to give God our leftovers, our leftover time, leftover money, talents. If I can fit God into my schedule, my budget, give him what's left. Got to go to the mall, get my hair done, get my hustle on, take this trip, make this move, get my groove on, get my freak on. Got to stop in Vegas. You know what happens, what goes on in Vegas, stays in Vegas. They tell me, amen. The resurrection requires repentance. We don't like to talk about that much. We don't like to talk about repentance much. But before you can get to Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, you got to deal with Good Friday. Yeah. There's no crown without a cross. I, I know we keep looking for a shortcut, a shortcut, but there's no crown without a cross. Yeah. You got to study to show yourself approved. Amen. I know uh, Brother Robert Malcolm is here, and he's over at the Harvard Business School, and we're praying for him, but he knows that he can't be proud. Every time somebody said we got a party over here, he knows if he's going to graduate, he got to study. Yeah. You got to put some time in. Yeah. Roll up your sleeves. Yeah. Get busy with what God has called you to do. If you're going to be successful, there's going to be a sacrifice. Yeah. But I declare. I have never seen a sacrifice that went unrewarded. I've never seen it. I've just never seen it. I've never seen a sacrifice go unrewarded. If we're going to have a better understanding, we need to realize, too, that devotion demands discipline. Nine and nine and a half just won't do. You want to be in the church? You want to be in the world? Got to make up your mind.
You got to make up your mind. Yeah. You have to decide. Amen. Amen. You can't be a player and a priest. <laughs> it don't roll like that. You gonna have to decide. I guess I have to tell myself some more. I had to decide. I had to decide. I never will forget. And it's funny how you you know you do stuff, and you don't think nobody knows but you. You'd be surprised what folk know. But back in the day, I was partying. We had partied, went to a place, got our high. I, I just got it going back to church, getting back in the church. You know, I was just getting back in the church. Slow, it was a slow process. You know how that is. But I gotten used to getting up and going to church. And we had been out partying one night, doing everything, you know, popping pills, you know, smoking dope, all that, you know. And we were all laid out at a friend of mine's house. And around by 8.30, I woke up. <laughs> and I started getting up. They said, <laughs> they said, Green, where are you going? I said, I'm going to church. <laughs> <laughs> they said, you're going where? <laughs> After all the party you just got through doing? I said, I'm going to church. So I got up. I got up. I was disheveled. I looked a mess. I looked a mess. I was high out of my mind. I, w I went over to Tabernacle Baptist Church. That's where I was going at the time. And I sat in the balcony at the top, at the back, reeking of alcohol, high out of my mind. I don't even know what the preacher preached on. Yeah. And the Lord spoke to my heart. So you're going to have to make up your mind. Yeah. Either you're going to be in the church or you're going to be in the world. But you can't do both. He said, you can never do this ever again. God is so good. Yeah, he's good. I'm just going to cut through the church. I know we got to go. Right. If I can encourage your heart today, I'd like to encourage you to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yeah. Don't lean on your own understanding. Yeah. Understanding comes from God. The Bible uses wisdom and understanding interchangeably. The psalmist declares that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In other words, that's not the end. It's just the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's the starting point. Understanding starts with God. Yeah. Some folk don't want to accept that. They want to do things their own way. But I'm going to say it again. Understanding starts with God. Yeah. It begins yeah. with a relationship with Jesus Christ. In other words, you have to let go and let God. God has a better understanding of what we need to succeed. Amen. I know you got it all figured out. But trust me when I tell you, God has a better understanding of what you need to succeed. Yeah. Of who you need to get close to, and show sure enough, who you need to let go. Yeah. Who you need to get close to, and show sure enough, who you need to let go. Yeah. Some folks, you got to let them go. You got to let the doorknob hit you. Mm-hmm. You know where. <laughs> Amen. The truth is, our company can keep us from our blessing. Yeah. I encourage you to get close to God and get close to Jesus. Yeah. Give God some space. Yeah. Seek his wisdom. The psalmist said, the word, this, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. There's something about God's word will strengthen you. It'll comfort you. It'll enlighten you. It'll encourage you. Yeah. It'll sustain you. It'll bless you. Let God's word bless your life. Yeah. Mark 11 and 22, one of my favorite passages in the Bible, have faith in God. Yeah. Four little words. Yeah. Amen. Four little words that can change your life. The 90th Psalm encourages us 
He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Romans 8 and 31 tells us if God be for us, yeah. who can be against us? Romans 10 and 13 says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And 1 John 4 and 4 tells us, greater is he that is in the world than he, the, the, the he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. I'm glad about that. Spend more time with God, more time in his word, more time in prayer, more time in church, more time praising his name. A 150th Psalm says, let everything that hath breath. Praise his name. The Bible says that the two men were on the road to Emmaus, coming from Jerusalem, reasoning within themselves, thinking about what had happened, confused about the events of the past week, the exuberation of Palm Sunday, and the tragedy of Good Friday. We had to be careful, church. A lot can happen in a short period of time. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. You can go from hero to zero, yeah. from healthy to sick, Amen. from living to dead. Yeah. They praised his entrance into Jerusalem with cries of Hosanna to the king and called for his death on Friday, saying, crucify him, crucify him. The ecstasy of Palm Sunday and the agony of Good Friday. And then the rumors that Jesus had written from the grave, they were having a hard time trying to put it all together. Yeah. Figure it all out. It all seemed so confusing. They needed a better understanding. The good news is that along came Jesus. It's a good thing when Jesus comes into your life. Can I get a witness, church? Jesus will meet you along your way. Take advantage of it when Jesus comes. The Bible says Jesus met them along the way and he expounded unto them the scriptures, all things concerning himself, Genesis to Revelation. He broke it down and revealed to them God's plan for their lives. Jeremiah says, I have plans for you to prosper you. Amen. He expounded to them the significance of his death and the victory of his resurrection. He broke it down from A to Z. And the Bible says that when their eyes were open, they saw him and recognized who he was. They realized that they had been in the company of somebody special. Yeah. Yeah. They entreated Jesus, abide with us. It's always a good thing when Jesus is in your midst. I ask the Lord to abide with me. I got some things on my plate. Abide with me. I got some problems in my life. Abide with me. I got some hang-ups and I had some letdowns. I got some things that I messed up and things that have messed me up. I need you, Lord, to abide with me. I got some demons I can't seem to get rid of. I got some things I need to get straight. Jesus, I need you to abide with me. The Bible says that he went and tarried with them. I'm so glad that if you ask Jesus to abide with you, he'll hang out with you, he'll tarry with you, get to know you while you get to know him. That's a good idea, church, because Jesus always has a better idea about what's going on in your life and mine, about what's going on in this great big world God created. The Bible says when Jesus was a child, he had a better understanding other children were playing baseball and soccer and basketball, but Jesus had a better understanding. He, he said, no, I ain't got time for Xbox and play school. He said, I got to put away childish things and be about my father's business. I tell you, he had a better understanding. When he saw the woman at the well, he had a better understanding. She was surprised to see him because of the racial situation. She said, Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. What you doing here? But Jesus had a better understanding. Amen. He knew that God created every one of us. We're all equal in God's sight. White, black, male, female, young, old, all that racial stuff is, oh, it's foolishness. We're all one in Christ Jesus. He asked her for water. She said, why are you asking me? He said, if you knew who it was that was asking you, you'd ask me, and I'd give you some living water. Yeah. The Bible said that he told her all about herself, and she ran to the city and said, come see a man yeah. 
who's unlike any man that I've ever met before. And when he was touched by the woman with the issue of blood, I tell you, Jesus had a better understanding. Yeah. She touched the hem of his garment, and the, he, Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? And his disciples didn't understand what was going on. They said, Jesus, you're in the midst of a crowd. Everybody pushing on you from, where, from every which side, and you asking, who touched me? He said, no, baby, somebody touched me with a touch of faith. Yeah. Somebody touched me because they needed me. Somebody touched me because they believed in me. He turned around, who touched me? And the woman raised her hand and said, I touched you, Lord, because I needed you. I tell you, when you touch the Lord, he'll thank you. I tell you, just a little faith in Jesus will help you out. Want a church? And when he told his disciples that he would have to suffer and die and be crucified on the cross and on the third day rise, I tell you, Jesus had a better understanding. Peter told him, Lord, you don't have to die. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to give your life for the sins of the world. But Jesus had a better understanding. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus had a better understanding. He knew God's purpose for his life on earth. He, he, he knew he had to do what no other power in heaven or earth could do. He had a better understanding. He knew he had to come down and save a sin sick world. He came down from 40 and two generations. He came down to climb an old rugged cross. I tell you, he had a better understanding. He knew he would be betrayed by Judas and denied by Peter. He had a better understanding. He knew he would be kissed in the garden of Gethsemane. You got to be careful about who's kissing your church. Every kiss ain't in love. Every handshake ain't your friend. Every slap on the back ain't congratulations. Can I get a witness? I'm glad that Jesus had a better understanding. They led him from judgment hall to judgment hall. They led him up Golgotha's hill, and they marched him to a mount called Calvary. They put nails in his hand. They put spikes in his feet. They pierced him in the side. He hung his head and died. He died, didn't he die? He died for you, and he died for me. He died for all my mistakes. He died for all my misinterpretation. He died for all my misunderstanding. He died for all my misspeak. He died for all my bad deeds. He died for all my bad words. He died for all my bad thoughts. He died for, died for all my bad acts. They dared him to come down from the cross. They said, if thou be the Christ, come on down from the cross. But I'm glad, so glad, I'm so glad that Jesus, he had a better understanding. He would not come down just to save himself, but he decided to die just to save me. Ain't he all right? Oh, I know he's all right. He knew that if he came down, my soul would still be lost. He knew if he came down, Satan would have his way. He knew if he came down, death would still have his sting and the grave would have his victory. He knew that if he came down, the wages of sin would lead us to death. He knew if he came down, the crooked could never be straight and the wrong could never be right. He knew if he came down, sorrow could not turn to joy. Sickness could not turn to hell. Darkness could not turn to light. Weeping could not turn to laughter. Storm clouds could not be turned to sunshine. Burdens could never be lifted. Mountains could never be moved. Death would triumph over life. Coronavirus would still be, could not be defeated. Trump would still be in office. But I'm glad, I'm so glad, I'm glad he would not come down. He decided to die. He decided to die for a wretch like me. They took my Jesus. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. He stayed there all day Friday. He stayed there Friday night. He stayed there Saturday morning. And he stayed there Saturday night. But I'm glad, I'm so glad he had a better understanding. Cause all that Sunday morning, he got up all power, all power, all power. Holy Ghost power, saving power, redeeming power, atoning power, miraculous power, amazing power, all power. 
I'm so glad that God we serve had a better understanding. He died for me and he died for you that we might have a right to the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Ain't he all right? He's all right. I tell you, he's just all right. Won't he heal your body? Won't he save your soul? Won't he pick you up, turn you around, plant your feet on solid ground? Thank you. Call on him. Lean on him. Don't lean on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Acknowledge him in all your ways. I'm not a singer, but Brother Cooper is 101 years old. And he sent a note this morning, say, whoever wants you to sing a song, I got to be obedient. Because I've been disobedient so many times. I've got some good days. And I've had some hills to climb. Help me out, church. I've had some weary days. And some, some sleepless nights. But when I think about all that the Lord has done for me, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. And I, I won't complain. Sometimes the hills seem low. I can barely see the road. I ask the question, Lord, why, why so much pain? I tell you what, but he knows. More than this old world could ever be. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I'll just say, thank you, Lord. And I, I won't complain. I tell you why. I tell you why. God has. I'll just say thank you, Lord. I'll just say thank you, Lord. And I, I won't complain. I tell you what he's done. He take my damn my night and he turned it today. Chased all, all my burdens away. I just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For putting food on my table. Thank you, Lord. For keeping me all night long. Thank you, Lord. For my family. Thank you, Lord. For new hope. Thank you, Lord. For my health and strength. Thank you, Lord. For reading my portion of health. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. You've been, you've been, he's been, he's been, he's been so good to me. He's been so good to me. Has he been good to you? He's been so good 
to me. I just say, thank you, Lord. I just say, thank you, Lord. You watched over me all night. Thank you, Lord. You kept me out of hurt, harm, and danger. Thank you, Lord. I God bless your hearts. Amen. God is good, church. Every time you think you've seen it all, God shows you something else. He's God. And he's God all by himself. God bless you. We're going to ask our officers to come at this time and lead us in the ministry of giving. Amen. Heavenly Fathers, once again we come just to say thank you. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the gifts, for the offering, for the tithes. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would bless them and that you would, they would be used for kingdom building and for building this church beyond Chapin. Be with us all throughout this day. 
and we give our deepest gratitude for this day and for all which has taken place. Thank you for the pastor and for the wonderful, wonderful messages that we heard today. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. as a congregation, our church covenant. It could be found on the first page of your hymnals, your red hymnal. As we read together, I will read the first paragraph. Congregation will read the second. I will read the third. Congregation will read the fourth. And the last, we will read all together. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we do now, in the presence of God, angels, in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. Of the church, the religion of the poor, and the spirit of the gospel of all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our department, deportment to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts, to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We moreover engage that 
when we remove from this place, we will all soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principle of God's word. And now unto him who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, be power and glory forever. Amen. God bless you. Please remain standing, church. For for nearly 59 years, someone has stood at this pulpit and raised the inevitable question. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, church, he fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even to you, with all their strength and all their ability, shall utterly faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But the good news, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. Let's all sing that. long time, way longer than it should have, but now I see. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus met with a few of his closest disciples and shared the Lord's Supper, the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But before he did anything, he gave thanks. Amen. I'm going to ask Reverend Glenn if you'll bless the elements. Heavenly Father, we just come to say thank you this morning. Thank you. We thank you for the, the word that was given. We thank you for the message, and we thank you for the messenger. Yeah. Father, we ask you right now to bless this condiment that's up here as the body that represents the, the blood in the body that represents our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of Christ. We ask you, Father, as we partake in this, we ask you to bless us and keep us strong, Father, and keep us safe. And that was establish a covenant between you and our Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The body.
body and the blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ.
lose his power. After he had given thanks over the elements, he took the bread and break it. He said, take, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let us eat together. Body of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Likewise, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine. He said, drink it all. It represents my blood. Here for the remission of sin. Let's drink together. The body and the blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. God bless you. We're almost done. Bible says that after they had, after he had given thanks, he shared the bread, the broken bread, which represents his broken body, and drank the fruit of the vine, which represents his precious blood. That they went out singing him. I don't know what they're saying. They might be saying, I won't complain. <laughs> Maybe they're saying what a friend we have in Jesus. But for over almost 59 years, we've been singing here in New Hope. I will trust in the Lord till I die. So let us stand and sing that song and shake somebody's hand. I will trust. We pray this service has been a blessing to you today. We invite you to join us on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. for our Bible study via Zoom. If you wish to join by video, please click on the Christian Education link on our website. If you wish to join by audio only, please call 312-626-6799, member ID 899-657, 40836. Please consider supporting this ministry through online giving at www.nhbc-aa.org or the new Vanco mobile app. You may also deliver your gift Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m. until 1 o'clock p.m. at the New Hope Baptist Church. Until we meet again, be safe be strong, be encouraged. May God continue to richly bless you is our prayer. Pastor Green and the New Hope Baptist Church.